Hi, and welcome to episode two of our uh, How to Build a Website with Squarespace 7 series. So in this episode, um, we're first going to look at uh, working on some of the settings and adding general settings to your page before moving through and looking at uh, page hierarchy, so how to change the navigation and how to add new pages and structure them before we finally have a quick look at editing some page content. So on the side of your at current template website, uh, you'll have this menu bar here. So pages, design, commerce, metrics, settings and help. We're going to start by going to settings. So one of the things that I've learned from building some Squarespace websites is that it's very easy to go through, build your website and forget about some of this important settings on the side, uh, such as search engine optimization, um, integrating it with different uh, sites and adding information that will be displayed on mobiles in a little information bar down the bottom. So adding the business information um, really helps, especially on mobile devices, um, as putting in contact emails and details help uh, people contact you especially on mobile devices where it has a little bar down the bottom and when you click on email it automatically opens up the email application on the on the mobile phone and allows people to mail to that email address right there physical location so on many Squarespace templates uh, they have an about us uh, a contact us page sorry where they actually display your location on a map and again this can help people navigate to your business so generating more business for you uh, as people it reduces the number of steps people have to take to find your business so we don't really have too much of a physical location for our business per se, but we can add Perth, Western Australia, and then business hours. So important if you want people to actually come in while you're open, take the time to go through and add your business hours in there. Okay, so that's the bus basic business information. And probably one of the most important ones is this regional. So if you're looking at putting a blog on your website, uh, it's possible to schedule posts now if you don't have the time zone set correctly those posts are not going to go up at the right time Squarespace by default has their time for your website set on the eastern seaboard of the United States in New York and we want to actually drag it over close to us nice graphical in interface um, you can just drag that dot over and it automatically changes the time and the nearest city. These don't really affect us too much. Uh, however, like measurement standard, if you're putting products on your site, you can determine whether you want them to be weighed in pounds or metric in kilograms and also the uh, store currency. So again, go through and save that. Permissions. So the next one down, uh, you can add uh, contributors and basic authors. So contributors 
have the same kind of access permissions as you. They can go through and change all of the website pages where a basic author can only really contribute to different content sections. Now this here, um, choosing the type of site changes a few things, um, including the search engine optimization um, that Squarespace does for you. And adding a little short uh, site description, this is pretty important um, because it can appear on Google just underneath your name, the first two sentences. So you want to write a site description just a basic summary about who you are. And I'm just going to copy that and you'll see why in a second. So click save. Um, in our previous episode, you saw that Squarespace put up some example websites for the templates, and that's because people tick this box here. So if your website's performing well, Squarespace might promote it for you in their examples, and that actually drives a lot of traffic towards your site as well. Okay, so domains, if you click get a domain that will take you to the Squarespace domain name registration uh, where you can purchase a domain or you can connect it to a third party domain. So if, if you already own your domain name, that's the option that you choose. Down here in marketing, you've got search and en engine optimization. And that's where we're going to paste our description into. I'm just going to write it out. So I accidentally selected the wrong section. And most of the search engine optimization is actually done by Squarespace themselves. So all you really need to do is add that little description in there, which appears in the search results of Google and other search engines. Um, and you can also uh, get a Google AdWords account if you're really serious about promoting a site on search engines. Again, in marketing, you've got uh, share buttons so on your blog posts and some of your other content you can put these share buttons at the bottom so people can easily share your blog post onto their Facebook, Twitter, Google accounts for example. Pin up buttons if you enable these little pins appear over your images and then people can uh, click on those pins and they put the images up onto their Pinterest. I'm keeping that disabled for now, um, just so that we retain all of our images on our site. Facebook page, linking to a Facebook page um, allows you to select the page, connect some of the updates that you put and also share a gallery of photos from the website to your Facebook page. So I'd highly recommend doing that um, and we're going to cover that in a upcoming episode where we'll look at integrating all of the social media sites so that they connect to your website. And Google AdWords, um, that's a little bit too advanced for this short tutorial um, but it is something that we can look at in future episodes if you'd like that, please leave a comment uh, below. Okay, so that does it for settings for now. So go back to home and we're now going to look at structuring your website and your page hierarchy. 
So you've got a couple of different areas here. Firstly, you've got your main navigation. That's this navigation bar up the top. So you've got home, about, news, read me and take action. And these little icons, so that icon there of the dog-eared sheet of paper, that's indicating a page. So that's just a one page and it's on its own, whereas this is a folder. So it actually contains pages and you'll see that it creates a drop down list. The A there uh, next to news is a blog section and you create all of these different pages by clicking on the plus sign and you get 10 different types of pages. So one that can be a simple link, a page that is a gallery of photos, an events page, which is great if you're doing an online calendar, a blog, folder, page, products. That's just a simple cover page, uh, index, and an album. So we're going to create a folder and name it products. Now if we click out of here and open up the page, uh, if we pull it underneath the home, it will then get the page to update and we end up with products added to the top. So it's as simple as that. And dragging all of these around changes the order that they go in from left to right. So the order that it is from top to bottom here determines the left to right order of the top buttons. Now we can add number of different pages in the products category. So there's the eight different types of pages. And we'll name one Quark, which is the name of our 2016 vehicle. And the other one EGP 2015, which was our 2015 electric bike. And you'll see once it reloads that when you hover over products, you've now got those two sitting there. So that's how to very quickly add your pages and create a directory of pages there. But that's all just for your main navigation up the top. If you want to add some, make these products appear at the bottom rather than at the top, pull it down into your secondary navigation and that's where you get the products added in. Or if you wouldn't like it to be linked, you can drag some of these pages down into the unlinked area. And that will then hide them so that there's no links on your pages, but it's still so there's no links on your pages, and yet you're still able to actually view those page um, those pages if you've got the direct link. So we'll drag that down there, and now you'll see that there's no link for products, but we've still got this Quark page, which is accessible publicly, although you just have to have a direct link to it. So that's very basic, setting up different uh, page hierarchies. And really, I 
I prefer to have this kind of structure. So the one page for home and then a number of different folders that go across with a call to action button. So this would be something like subscribe. So double clicking on a page allows you to change the page title. So we can change that to subscribe. And immediately you get that change on the actual page as you see it. So the great thing about Squarespace is you can see exactly what you're, you're changing as you, cha uh, as you do it. And you can either change it on the side here or hover over the navigation there and edit and it pulls it up as well. Finally, the last thing we'll touch on is editing actual page content. So if you've got this little menu down the side, it'll allow you to make changes to your page. So you can then go down and it opens up the page content block. Click on edit in there and you can make changes you can make changes to the site as it's live nobody's going to see what you change until you press save and that's when a new version of the site goes live so you can create your website, get it out to the public, and then keep working on it, keep making it look better by changing things and then only updating when you're happy with how it looks. So Squarespace works on a block method. You can create all of these different blocks, such as a image block, text block, Uh, audio blocks, you can embed YouTube videos and all of these are really well set up and we'll cover them in a lot more detail in the next episode but essentially you just create your site by using these blocks and then adding content to the inside. The great thing is you can create all of your blocks just as a list going down then grab different blocks and move them around and completely change the way that your page, your page looks. So grabbing that text block and then putting it to the side, we'll change that. And this is all stuff that you can actually play around with. You get that division Sorry about that. So you get like the little division uh, icon in the middle and you can resize your screen like that. So change the size of different text blocks. This also works with image blocks and uh, YouTube blocks as well. So you can just move everything around your site and really play around with the way that it looks graphically. So hopefully your Squarespace site's coming along well and this has been some help. Um, if you have any constructive criticism, please leave it in the comments below. Anything you'd like to see me cover, let me know and I'll endeavour to cover it in the next episode. Thanks for watching and look forward to you joining us the next time.